So, picking up from the last video, uh, the crankcase is opened and I was, you know, considering dismantling further, but, um, but then I broke my tool. So I decided mm, this is gonna be probably a parts engine anyways, um, and it looks fine. So let's just leave it at this, you know. What I can say here is that this is gonna be a longer video uh, for sure. It's um, There's been a lot of work <laughs> on this one and um, I have about 1.5 terabytes of data for this uh, motorcycle project now. So it's filling up but I'm gonna put in um, sort of chapters on YouTube if I can uh, get that working so that you can skip to the sections that that you wanna see. And also, you know, keep in mind that in this whole video, I'm, I'm pretty much doing two engines. Well, I'm not specifying that any at any point, but if you see something weird, it's probably because the work I'm doing in that frame is on a different engine. I just cut it all together so it sort of looks like it's all done on the same engine but you know there's one parts and then engine that I uh, that is the one I dismantled totally and then there's the other engine which I just sandblasted uh, and uh, painted without dismantling anything pretty much what I discovered first here was that there the number on the engine is like cut away like right where I'm working right now you can see that it's cut there now why somebody would cut out that number uh, you can uh, imagine yourself but I'm not gonna worry too much about it right now so what I did before I started spraying here was I just scuffed up the uh, entire thing it's powder coated and it wasn't looking too bad uh, most of the places so um, I just scuffed it up with some sandpaper and uh, then I'm just painting right over it I don't know, maybe you need a primer or something, but um, I didn't do that here, so we'll see how that holds up over time. So then it's just the same procedure on, on the bottom half uh, of the crankcase. Just a lot of more or less boring work getting into the nooks and cracks here. So here's a tip for you, if um, if you're gonna clean these mating surfaces here, this spray actually removed my spray paint, it didn't uh, handle that one. So um, do that before you paint the um, surface of the crankcase. I'm also gonna just remove as much as I can from the pistons of the build up here, but um, they're not gonna be perfect, but it's fine. While I was working on this, I noticed that one of these pistons had a little um, scuff or mark here where, where the metal was actually coming out. So that I'd obviously have to grind away that. So I had to take this piston off and um, yeah, just quickly grind that away. Now here I've put the two halves together again and uh, I'm actually just gonna pour a little bit of oil through the whole thing because it's open in the bottom just to have a little bit of um, a layer of oil on the parts because they are totally dry right now and I don't know how long this engine is going to be sitting until it actually is taken into use so it's nice to just have a little bit of oil on everything. This is the cylinders, they've been uh, sandblasted and painted. Again here the gasket surface is not done before it was painted which you know should have definitely been the other order to the gasket surfaces first and then paint it. I think cleaning the gasket surfaces is one of the worst jobs that I've done so far on this bike. It's so boring and uh, and you won't know if you've done a good job uh, before you know you've had the engine in use for a while and it starts leaking so. So I put on some new uh, O-rings here and a new gasket and uh, we're pretty much ready to put on the cylinders I think. Unfortunately I didn't get footage of putting on the cylinders but I did it just without any um, special tools or anything. I was able to push the cylinders directly onto the pistons uh, without compressing the piston rings or anything like that. So now moving on to the bottom, uh, the oil pan uh, cover, It's this one was pretty, I mean it had a pretty bad damage right in the middle, uh, so I wasn't able to sort of 
polish it off as as I wanted, as you'll see later here. But but there's really not, nothing special else to say about this. I polished it off a little bit, but once I realized, you know, that the damage was there, um, and I wasn't gonna get rid of that anyways. And you know, it'll probably get dented while I'm, when I'm putting the engine back in the frame. It's like I'm not gonna spend too much time on polishing this one. So I moved on to the head, which I did like this. I taped it together and uh, plugged up the ports, tried to block every entrance into the head as, uh, as best as I could, and then I sandblasted the whole thing. After sandblasting it, I uh, painted it just like it is now. It's like a lot of things on this build, I'm doing it in a slightly awkward order. I should, uh, generally I paint things a little bit too soon. So um, here too, like I start doing the valve job uh, and I'm taking out the valves anyway, so I could have just painted it later, but I don't know, I, I didn't think, I didn't know if I was gonna do the valve jobs and things sort of happened a little bit less planned than they probably should have been. But anyways, uh, here I'm using soda blasting on this gasket surface. And that actually worked really well to remove most of the stuff. Um, it doesn't it doesn't harm the uh, surface at all. Now removing the valves, I uh, use this tool, um, compress the valve spring, and I you have to remove these tiny little things here. Uh, don't lose them, but they uh, luckily they go out with a magnet pretty well. I was able to get them out pretty easily. The difficult part is getting them back in. Make sure you um, keep track of all the parts in here. You know, I have a separate container that I put everything in and um, I, I try and put it in the right exactly as I took it out. So I just don't really have to think about anything when I put it in. These are the valve stem seals that I'm trying to remove here. Some of these were really stuck on there, but actually these blue tools that I'm using here are like uh, hooks and sort of bent needles in uh, various different forms. And they've been really useful on this whole project. They're actually one of the most like underrated tools. I don't know what they're even called. I've never really seen anybody use them before, but they're, uh, I've used them for a lot of things. Now I almost forgot the bottom part of the valve spring uh, assembly, but once these are out there are not really anything left on this head. I guess now would be a better time to you know paint it and stuff. Instead I'm gonna wash it and then I'm gonna start um, working on the valves once they are out. Now the valves are in a you know decently bad condition I guess. I haven't seen too many valves in my life but I just put them on the drill making sure to protect the stem a little bit and then uh, grind away at them. So after cleaning up the valves it's time for valve lapping. Um, I have two, um, two different compounds like one coarse and one a little bit finer. There's not really anything else to say about this other than uh, the sound. You can hear when you're done by the sound uh, pretty easily. Now after this, um, I put on the new valve stem seals. Pretty easy, just uh, push them right on. Then we're pushing the valve back in through the seal. Um, no problems here. Putting the springs back in, like the whole assembly, making sure it goes the right way back in as well. I couldn't really tell any difference on the springs. Like there's supposed to be one side they go in, but um, I put them back in the way they came out, but I don't know if it actually matters. Uh, if somebody knows, they can put in in the comments how much that matters. So now to the uh, at least a little bit more difficult part, getting those small keepers on. Um, 
they, they sort of sit in that groove that you can see here. And uh, I put a little bit of grease on there to uh, sort of stick them into place. But this was still uh, somewhat of a tricky job. It didn't take anywhere near as long time as it took me to clean the gasket surfaces and all that stuff. But uh, it was still a little bit annoying. So here the head is uh, done. As you can see the exhaust valves are a little bit uh, worse than the intake valves. I couldn't get them totally clean but uh, I think they're they'll work and uh, just to test I um, did a little test here with uh, pouring some water into the exhaust valve and checking if it's sealed. So you can see here I'm putting water into the intake and uh, there is absolutely no leaking whatsoever so I think this is sealed as good as it can be. Here I've got the head gasket on, I'm getting ready to put on the top. Uh, there's some o-rings here first and then here I'm trying to get the head on but it's not going on and then I realized why. And if you remember from the previous video I think uh, when you saw me hammering this thing off I used the metal hammer and this is why it's not going on. <laughs> I forgot to drill out these holes. Um, that's a pretty quick job, so uh, just cleaning out these and then uh, wiping up the, some of the de debris. And then I'm ready to put it on. So I'm torquing these uh, in the, in the, according to the manual in the right order and I think the torque was like 22 or, or something. There's two copper washers on this one uh, at the very end. And uh, I saw somebody else on YouTube, they just um, heated them to their were red hot and then quenched them in water and said, you know, that you can use those again without any issues. Uh, so I thought, why not? So it's time to put the valve buckets uh, back on. I uh, used a little bit of oil on these and uh, they were actually a lot tighter to get on than they were to get off. They, they went pretty easily out but now for some reason they are uh, kind of struggling a little bit to get them in. So then there's the whole timing issue. Um, I think I did it correctly but I got a little confused with the dots on the gear because that one doesn't really line up or match up too well to anything that I can see but the dot on the cam does and you know the cam is what pushes the valve so I think it should be as long as that one is all right I think we should be good but um, if anybody knows any different you're definitely welcome to tell me in the, no in the comments. So before you put the cam back on make sure to put some assembly lube or oil on the bearings and then just tighten down, I think tighten down all of the um, sort of holders or what, whatever they're called, screws on top of the cams so that it sits snugly and then you can adjust the timing afterwards. You can barely see it here, but uh, the marks on the cams line up to the marks on the bearings here. And uh, I think this is correct. Um, if uh, it's not, then Somebody can tell me in the comments. Now we have some general uh, assembly left. I'm replacing the O-rings on this oil pump and then uh, putting the oil pump back on, putting the clutch back on. The clutch I'm not gonna tighten all the way because that one's uh, still broken. I haven't ordered a new one. I put new O-rings on the relief valve. And yes, I did not scrape these gasket uh, um, these gasket surfaces uh, when I had this crankcase split, which is absolutely what you should do. This was a huge pain to just um, have to do afterwards. But I got it, I got it clean, and I uh, got a new gasket on here. So um, at least we got it done. Then we got the oil pan, putting uh, that one on. As sort of the last thing I do on this bike, I um, took all the covers and sandblasted those. 
and painted them. And then uh, on the valve cover here, I need uh, to get out some of the details back out, like the letters, so I can polish those up nice. And then it's starting to look uh, really good. I'm also polishing up uh, the side fins here just to um, get some detail and contrast from the black of the rest of the engine. So I, I really like this uh, type of look. I've seen a lot of other people doing it too. So, so overall I'm really happy. Uh, there's a lot of things that I would uh, at least remember and do in a different order next time. Um, but I'm happy with the results and uh, I hope the engine runs. <laughs> I uh, have not tested that yet, so. Anyways, we'll see you in the next episode, I hope. I don't know what that one's gonna be about yet, but uh, I suspect might be the tank. Oh, and as a final note, uh, I did fi figure out the rattling, or I'm pretty sure I did figure out the rattling from the first episode, and this bolt, it was uh, pretty, it was loose. Like it wasn't turning around but it was loose enough you can see here to cause a rattle so i tightened that one up and we'll see uh, when i start the engine but i'm pretty sure that was the rattling noise anyways thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next episode